Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and in this video, I'll be talking about advancing blade compressibility, sometimes referred to as compressibility for short. Now, you may or may not have realized, uh, but an aircraft's V&E, that's the velocity never exceeds speed, um, is not just based on retreating blade stall, but also advancing blade compressibility when in the right um, environments. So if you haven't seen my V&E video, I recommend checking out that first. I'll put a link in the description as well as above in the video. But let's take a look at what's going on here. So normal airflow over a wing is going to look something like this, or an airfo airfoil. So as the airflow uh, approaches the airfoil, uh, it has a relatively smooth laminar flow. So as the air gets closer to the wing, it almost hugs the shape of the airfoil as it passes around it. Well, as helicopters operate at high speeds at sub-zero temperatures, it's possible for the advancing blade of the helicopter to approach the speed of sound. Now, when this happens, compressibility effects begin to take place in the form of a shock wave, buffeting, induced drag, or increased drag, sorry, and stability issues. So the flow is altered by these shock waves and is going to look something like this. So if that's your airfoil, now you're going to have some shock waves start to build up. So these shock, wa shock waves are looking something like this where you're gonna have a region along the blade that has supersonic airflow. So now the flow around the airfoil looks something like this, where it's very, very, very turbulent because it's not really using the shape of the airfoil. It's a shock wave forming around that airfoil. Now your advancing blade is going from a subsonic speed through some transonic and supersonic speeds at this point. Now this starts at the blade tip and continues inward towards the hub. Uh, and you may be asking, how is this possible I fly a helicopter why am I talking about the speed of sound? Well, if you look at the math, you can start to see how it is that your advancing blade can get closer to it. So let's take a, uh, a basic helicopter, one that everybody is pretty familiar with. We'll take a Huey. So basic rotor diameter is 48 feet, and it spins at 324 rounds per minute. So we'll have to get into a little bit of the math here, uh, but I'll just demonstrate how it's done so that you can then calculate it for your helicopter. Now there are a few ways to do this, so I'm just gonna pick one and I'll just go through it. I'll kind of talk about some of the deviations or alternate ways that you can uh, find out this speed. So I'll start out by finding the rotor circumference. So if our rotor system is like this, and let's say it's counterclockwise rotating system, uh, just for later, circumference is gonna be the distance around the edge of the ring. Also, what I need to know is the diameter, which is the 48 feet. It's going to be broken down into the radius of 24. So the, the formula for the circumference is going to be 2 pi r. So 2 times 3.14 times the radius, which is going to equal out to 150.72 feet. So the advancing, or not the advancing, but the blade tip is traveling 150.72 feet in one revolution. From here, we can calculate uh, the rounds per minute and get the the feet per minute that the blade is traveling. So this is going to be that 150.72 times 324 rounds in a minute equals 48,832 feet per minute. And that's going to give us a speed. So now we had a distance and a, uh, a, a number of revolutions or a rate. Now we have a speed of the, the blade tip as it travels around the helicopter. Now from here, I convert it to, you know, either miles per hour, kilometers per hour, knots, whatever speed you want to use. But for simplicity, I'll just go ahead and convert this over to knots. And this comes out to 482 knots. Now, I just entered this into a, just a basic calculator. You can go do the math to convert it. Once again, miles per hour, knots, uh, whatever you want to at this point. But from here, what this tells us as the, the tip of the blade is traveling around at 482 knots. This means that a stationary hover, the, the blade tips are traveling this speed. So if I were to fly at 100 knots, the advancing blade is gonna get that extra 100 and turn it, or have 582 knots of airspeed, whereas the retreating blade is gonna have 382 knots of airspeed. So now let's look into the, uh, the speed of sound and we'll start comparing these. Now the speed of sound, it's not a, a fixed number. Speed of sound is directly affected by the temperature outside. And the colder it is, the slower the speed of sound is. So at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the speed of sound is roughly 668 knots. But as we get colder, that speed of sound gets a little bit slower. 
So it's say minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, that speed of sound is 608 knots. So why is this important here? Well, now we can start to compare it to our blade speed. So the difference between the speed of sound at 70 degrees, the 668 minus the 482, it's gonna be a difference of 186 knots. So I gotta be traveling at 186 knots before my advancing blade can start to approach the speed of sound. Uh, but if I'm looking at the cold temperatures, minus 20, I got the 608 minus the 482, gives it about 126 knots. So where's the speed of sound here? I'm probably getting closer to my retreating blade stall at these speeds, but closer to minus 20, minus 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, the colder I get, it's more likely I'm getting close to advancing blade compressibility, not that retreating blade stall. Um, but once again, um, I'm separating the difference between the speed of sound minus the speed of my rotor blade, and that's kind of giving me the difference on that advancing blade. Uh, but one thing to note here, the kicker, is that if you remember from previous videos, the airflow accelerates over an airfoil. This means that your blade doesn't have to actually break the speed of sound in order for the airflow to break the speed of sound. So it's believed that the airflow can accelerate as much as 10% over the airfoil, meaning compressibility effects can play take place much sooner. So is the speed of sound usually depicted as Mach 1.0? If you're taking 10% off that, you can potentially get into um, compressibility effects at a Mach 0.9. Mach 0 and this equates to roughly 65 knots at minus 20 degrees with this rotor system at this speed. So potentially at 65 knots at minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit for this rotor system, I could potentially start to see the effects of advancing blade compressibility. Um, so why is this important? Well, just like retreating blade stall, you're entering, entering into an area where half of your rotor disc can't produce lift. In retreating blade stall, you notice the aircraft, as it its retreating blade would stall, it would pitch up and roll to the left or the side of its stall. But in advancing blade compressibility, you're gonna notice the nose is gonna wanna tuck and potentially roll to the right. Now, not only is this uh, gonna be followed on with extreme vibrations, uh, but you're potentially going to be damaging that, that rotor blade because your advancing blade is popping in and out of Mach 1 uh, air speeds. So this is stressing the blade severely and can cause structural failure very quickly in that blade. So to correct for this, you want to decrease the collective. You want to try to decrease your air speed. Overall, you're just trying to get that pitch out of the blade here. Uh, decrease the severity of whatever maneuver you were doing. And in some situations, um, some engineers know you're gonna be operating you know, in extremely cold environments and you know you wanna be doing some high speed operations. Some engineers will even rig the rotor RPM uh, to be slightly uh, slower so that you don't get into these, these advancing blade compressibility environments even sooner. But that's gonna decrease your hover performance if you were to do something like that. But that's all I have for this video running out of time, but simply put, advancing blade compressibility occurs at high speed, low temperature flight, where the advancing blade reaches a Mach 1 or higher speed. Now be sure to hit like and subscribe below and leave a comment or question below as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Jacob. This is Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less. As always, safe flying.